Did you know that the first documented Muslim in America was an African explorer named Estevanico? Did you know that Melungeons were Europeans, some of who were Muslim, were reported to have fled the Spanish Inquisition and settled in America in the 1800s? These and many other amazing facts about the history of Muslims in America have been preserved for the nation's benefit at the America's Islamic Heritage Museum. This is our story. In 1996, CSAM, which stands for Collections and Stories of American Muslims, was started as a traveling exhibit under the leadership of President Amir Muhammad. I grew up in, uh, in Connecticut in the, the mid-1950s. French Americans, Spanish Americans, Puerto Rican Americans, Black Americans, uh, Italian Americans, Scandinavian people today, we identified them by their culture or the heritage that they came from. And some of them were my best friends. Uh, that taught me and showed me uh, the humanness that we're all one. Amir's uniquely diverse upbringing would serve as a foundation for him later in life. He joined the Nation of Islam after making a decision to change his life for the better and then transitioned to Orthodox Islam under the leadership of Imam Waradin Muhammad. My life was somewhat like Malcolm's life, very street life. And I felt that there was a need for me to make a change. I came a Muslim, uh, joined the Nation of Islam in 1974, and over the years I evolved and grown and learned to read the Quran, read the Quran every day. The Quran teaches us how to be better human beings. Amir's love of knowledge and diversity led him to open and own a bookstore where he interacted with Muslims of many nationalities, but he noticed very quickly that most were ignorant of the contributions of Muslims who paved the way before them. This would inform his mission and his life's work. And I saw that there was a disconnect with the Muslim community, that there was a need for them to understand that Muslims have been a part of the American fabric since its beginning, since its inception. And I saw that they has, did not see that connection, nor did they see the African-American Muslim as being Muslim. We developed an exhibit, a traveling exhibit, maybe 40 pieces. And we travel all around the country with this exhibit. And each year it was grow and grow and grow. Not only did they travel to major cities inside the USA, the traveling exhibit was invited to present amongst dignitaries and heads of state around the globe and went to places such as Qatar, Bermuda, Nigeria, and more. Then we uh, expand. I mean, we did a lot of universities. We've been to Harvard three times, Stanford, the University of Pittsburgh, the University of North Carolina. I mean, so many schools, so many MSAs. We uh, did a lot of work. I think we did two exhibits at a couple of uh, synagogues. After traveling for 12 years around the country and the world and placing exhibits in national museums such as the Smithsonian, CSAM finally found a permanent home in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and opened the America's Islamic Heritage Museum. As the museum expanded its reach, so did its collection of amazing facts and artifacts covering every period of time in this country from the 1300s to now. Did you know that Muslims was not cowboys in this country? There was camel boys. There was over 75 camels that they brought over in America to go out west, and they hired three Muslims. Even one of those Muslims established a town, did you know? In World War I, there was 550 people with the last name Muhammad. Fought for America, fought for you and me, my father and everybody else. Did you know one of the first Muslim scholars Hafiz in the United States arrived here in the 1730s. Manhattan, Coney Island, was established and founded by a European Muslim, Anthony Van Jamerson. Today, the museum is not only a pillar and stronghold in the Southeast DC community, it is inspiration for tourists, Muslim or not, who visit from around the world. My name is Raul Del Valle, and I am from Guatemala City, Guatemala. My name is Brett Brownstein. I'm from uh, New York. My name is Leonte. I live in Washington, D.C. I'm Yusuf from Al Fatih Academy. The Islamic heritage and the, the Muslim practices were something uh, I didn't know much about it. I got to learn deeper understanding on the impact and uh, how valuable all their efforts have been to American society. It helps me realize of what um, big accomplishments we have made and the different things we have done. 
The impact of the museum is great for the community in a positive way. We've been told by several um, people in the community, especially um, some of the Muslim sisters, how being here is a protection for them because we do so many community outreach programs like the feeding of the children and giving out the free food on each month and then we gave out free turkeys right before Thanksgiving. She said, by us being as charitable as we are to the community, then the community looks on Muslims in a more positive light and it's a big protection for her. Something really interesting that I found about uh, during my visit to this museum was the Quran written in Spanish, uh, since there is a very good exhibition with the different types uh, of Qurans, that there are different versions of it in different languages, and uh, it felt very heartwarming to see one written in my uh, mother language and to see how valuable it is for um, this community. I learned a lot about this neighborhood, um, the people that live here. Uh, how long they've all been here and the, how they, you know, how they interact within this community, what it means to them. Um, and I see a lot of people coming in and getting snacks, students from schools, and it shows like a real community. Um, everyone kind of knows each other, depending, like, it doesn't matter what age. Um, everyone seems to be interacting and to be friends with each other, so it's very cool to see that. I haven't really seen neighborhoods like that. When they be having the Lord Muhammad thing for Muslims, like, yeah, like I help them like, set up the whole thing, set up the food and stuff, make my plate. And then when everybody else come, they make their plate, and we, everybody just eat. I, I came in, kept telling me, get, keep going to school, get good grades. So I was a, I was a bad kid, for real. But it, it's, it, it motivated me to be a good kid. I really appreciate him, man, because like, he, he did a lot for everybody. And, and he a good man. Thank you for letting me come here every day. Um, he kept he kept the food and the little after school program going every day, and let me work and uh, volunteer with, with his programs that he had going on over the weekend. I thank him for a lot and keep me motivated and changing my lifestyle around. This museum will teach you a lot and will benefit from you if you ever talk to a Muslim, if you're not Muslim, or if you are a Muslim, you'll know what has happened in our lifetime and what we've gone through. This museum will show you um, like from a different point of view, so if you're not Muslim, it'll show like how, what we've been through. It, it was a eye-opening experience and uh, I really hope to come back one day and see how much it has grown since uh, Islamic heritage has not only impacted in the past, uh, but I'm pretty sure and certain that uh, it's working very hard to provide a brighter future. Today, we seek to rebuild into a state-of-the-art facility. Our future consists of two spaces. One, a technologically advanced exhibit space, and two, a community service space to better serve our communities. Support the America's Islamic Heritage Museum. Go to aihmuseum.org.